Thanks, Ben. Now's the time where we learn more about the professors of UNCW's campus. Let's get over to the studio with Janae Randall and Professors Exposed. Thanks, Sarah. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Professors Exposed. I'm Janae Randall, and today I would like to welcome Professor Elizabeth Irvin from the Foreign Language Department. Thank you, Professor Irvin, for coming on to our show. Thank you. Professor Irvin, you teach a various number of Spanish level classes here at UNCW. How long have you taught here? I've been here 10 and a half years. Mm -hmm. Started here in August of 2000. As a prior student of yours, I know that in class you often mention your experiences with your travels in Spanish speaking countries. You also, throughout the year, take a group of students with you to those countries? Mm -hmm. About once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. I go to Mexico uh, for a cultural visit. And I usually take a small group of students. Uh, sometimes a professor or someone from the community joins me. Mm -hmm. And during those trips, what do you guys usually try and accomplish? We like to see Mexico, real Mexico, mm -hmm. to see how people live. Uh, so we don't stay in hotels. We stay in homes. We stay with my family. Mm -hmm. We walk everywhere. We take buses everywhere. We see historical sites. We go shopping um, just to get people to see what real Mexico looks like in, in a non-tourist area. Uh -huh. What the real Mexico mm -hmm. is all about. Right. Um, have you had any issues with any of your travels before with students? I have been very fortunate. <laughs> no, I have <laughs> never had any problems with, with students. Um, they're always um, very open to suggestions, follow instructions, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and they've behaved well. Great. That's great to hear. And last year, you pioneered a program, um, Cuerpo Sano Mente Sana, which is translated as Healthy Mind, Healthy Body in order to help um, low-income Hispanic families try to live healthier lives. How did you come up with this program? Well, I've done a lot of work with the Hispanic population in the past, and one big issue in this population is diabetes and obesity, and of course a lot of our population is low income, and it's just been an interest of mine to help people live healthier lives within their own means, and I was lucky enough to um, get a small grant to get us started last year, and we're still working from that and from donations. Mm -hmm. Was there something that particularly inspired you to initiate the program? Well, it was something that I had in the back of my mind for a while, and then a high school student um, who uh, uh, I met through an acquaintance of mine mm -hmm. uh, decided she wanted to write a grant. She needed a project, so I became her project, and that's how we got started. Oh, that's great. And how many, um, how many families do you reach out to? Last year when we started, we had seven families. This year we have 14. Wow, that's, that's a huge, mm -hmm. huge increase. Do you expect that it will increase in future years to come? Most likely. I started out very small since I hadn't done this kind of program mm -hmm. before, and we wanted to increase participation this year. And uh, we are actually covering about half of the families um, through the school that I work with. Mm -hmm. We're taking care of half of their Hispanic families. Wow. Now, how is it that you can kind of check in on these families? Do you have meetings every so often throughout the year, or how does that process mm -hmm. work? Um, on a weekly basis, I send them home with healthy recipes, with food to, get to, to prepare these healthy recipes, with health information, and once a month, we get together with these families to discuss an, an issue regarding health, whether it be incorporating exercise into their daily lives mm -hmm. or cooking healthier. Um, we try to keep it very informal and very accessible to all mm -hmm. of our families. Absolutely. And since you began the program, have you seen any recognizable differences within the families themselves? Yes, um, they're learning some new foods, uh -huh. uh, new ways to prepare their foods. Uh, some of them are losing weight. We've had great success stories with people losing weight mm -hmm. um, and making positive changes as a family in mm -hmm. what they eat. As a whole together. Mm -hmm. Now, would you hope to um, someday possibly expand the program to wheat reach a wider audience throughout Wilmington or even even broader? Well, it would be nice. My, unfortunately, my time is very limited, but I would love to see this kind of program expanded, not just in the Hispanic community across Wilmington, but among all communities across Wilmington, um, especially those that are low income and have a difficult time finding the means to, mm -hmm. to be healthy. Absolutely. Is there any way for um, people who may want to get involved somehow 
become active with the program? Oh, absolutely. All people have to do is contact me. Um, some I've had students last year and last semester who volunteered. Um, I have a student this semester who has volunteered uh, his service hours for his class to come work with me. So absolutely, uh, we love having volunteers. That's great. Thank you so much, Professor Irvin, for coming onto the show with us. I'm Janae Randall. Back to you, Sarah. That wraps it up for this edition of Seahawks Central News. Special thanks to the Communications Studies Department, UNCW TV, and the Wilmington Costco for making our show a reality. Even more thanks to Bill DeNome and Dustin Miller. Check out the latest edition of the Seahawk at newsstands all over campus. Remember, you can keep up with Seahawks Central News by stopping by youtube.com slash tilltv2010. As some of you may know, I will be graduating at the end of this semester, and tonight's show will serve as my last as your anchor. It has been an honor and a privilege reporting for you and working with my fellow classmates here at Seahawks Central News. So for the last time, I'm Kara Trotter. And I'm Sarah Lively, saying so long, Seahawks. Oh my God, so <laughs> Don't cry. Don't be scared.